Before the Japanese colonization in 1910, Korea was an agrarian society under the Joseon dynasty. Their diets were monotonous, mostly rice, barley, and vegetables, with meat reserved for the elite. Average heights at the time likely hovered around 5 feet for men, based on skeletal remains from the period. So, we can assume that their diets lacked proteins and enough calories to live a long, healthy life. In addition, during the Japanese rule, food exports to Japan and forced labor reduced local nutrition. A 1930 study of Korean conscripts found that men averaged 5 feet 2 inches, shorter than Japanese soldiers, who were 5 feet 3 inches. Korea gained independence from Japanese colonial rule on August 15, 1945, when Japan surrendered to the Allied forces at the end of World War II. Then the Korean War happened, destroying infrastructure and agriculture in South Korea. The Korean War made a lasting impact in South Korea. The per capita calorie intake was below 1,800 calories per day, accelerating malnutrition among both children and the elderly. In order to improve this situation, South Korea's government, under the leadership of President Park Chung-hee, launched five-year economic development plans, focusing on exports like textiles and electronics. As a result, by 1970, GDP per capita hit $279, and by 1980, it was $1,674, still low but growing faster than similar countries at the time. This resulted in a surge in migration from rural to urban areas in search of better jobs, living conditions, and food access. This had a massive impact on the heights of the population. For example, in 1960, about 28% of South Koreans were living in urban areas. This rose to a remarkable 74% by 1990. On paper, in 1961, South Koreans consumed about 50 grams of protein per day, most of which was plant-based. By 2010, this rose to approximately 80 grams, with animal proteins like meat, fish, and dairy making up 50%. Beef consumption also jumped from 1.5 kilograms per person in 1970 to 13 kilograms in 2020. Milk was culturally uncommon due to lactose intolerance affecting approximately 75% of East Asians. As an effort to fight malnutrition, the government launched school milk programs in the 1970s. This boosted intake of dairy from 2 liters per person in 1970 to 60 liters by 2000. Let me show you the results of various studies that show how seriously South Korea took malnutrition. A 1970 survey found that 30% of South Korean children were stunted. By 2000, this fell to 2%, matching developed nations. In 1960, South Koreans lived to 52 years on average by 2025. It's 83 years. Longer lives reflect better childhood health, which is crucial for the growth of a person. Since the 2000s, private clinics have been offering growth hormone therapy. A 2019 report estimated 10,000 kids receive it annually, which costs $5,000 to $10,000 per course, suggesting a cultural shift towards preference of taller individuals than their counterparts. A 2019 study of North Korean defectors found that men averaged 5 foot 5 inches and women 5 foot, 3 to 4 inches shorter than South Koreans. Research in Economics and Human Biology 2017, showed that South Korea's height surge fits the term catch-up growth. It is when a population rapidly improves its living standards and conditions and approaches its genetic limit within two to three generations. This is further explained by another study by Seoul National University in 2023, where they noted the height gains have slowed down after 2000 with the present teens being only 0.5 inches taller than their 90s counterparts, supporting the previous study. Recently, K-pop and K-dramas have amplified the height's appeal. A 2021 survey found that 60% of South Korean women preferred partners over 5 feet 9 inches, which increased 
from 40% in 1990. Taller individuals often earn more and attend better schools in South Korea. A 2015 study found a one-inch height increase correlated with a 2% income boost, which creates immense pressure on parents to invest in their children's height. Although height is mostly genetic, South Korea has defied all odds by becoming the tallest country in East Asia.